Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, uh, the fourth week in Easter, I think. That is okay. correct. Yeah. It is. Uh, we have entered that middle time where I kind of lose. I lose my place on the calendar. So I know it's Monday, which is a good thing. Uh, thank you for being with us. If you are uh, watching and have prayer intercessions or Thanksgivings you'd like to share, please add them to the comment box. If you're live on Facebook, we will share them at the appropriate point in the office, which follows the prayer attributed to St. Francis. If you're watching later on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, please still share those comments and we will add them at our next daily office, which is this evening, 5 p.m. for evening prayer. Now today, I'm, I'm already worried how I'm going to pronounce his name, Gregory of Nazarius. Nazianzus. Nazianzus. Now, he is one of the Cappadocian fathers. Well yeah. Okay. So as I was reading about him, there is a lot of theological heavy lifting, which I'm not going to attempt. I will pass off to Father in a moment. Uh, the takeaway that we lay people can uh, grasp is he was a strong champion of the Trinity particularly in the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit was equal with the Father and the Son and did not follow the Son. He, he even said that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was there, just more subtle. So, uh, and uh, as we talk about the Nicene Creed, the, the Council of Nicaea, he was there. And... Um, Again, strong, strong champion of the Trinity, which which went out in the day. Now, the my my take on Gregory, one of the Cappadocian fathers with Basil the Great, and I think Gregory of Nyssa was Basil's brother, and our Gregory was Basil's friend. And John Chrysostom. Mm. One of the three great doctors of the church in the early days. Right, but the Cappadocian fathers was he, he wasn't with them. Yeah, Basil and the two Gregs. It's the great sixties rock band. Right. Um the three sixties, that is. <laughs> the three sixties. The uh, but my what uh what struck me about Gregory was that he did he went where he was needed, he went where he was called in in, in uh, letting go of what he wanted. He wanted to be a monk. He wanted to lead a quiet aesthetic life. And instead, um, his father who was bishop and Basil who was bishop uh, pushed him into the into the episcopate. Maybe if they were episcopate then, the, the bishop. That's right. And so he, he went where he was needed and uh, I think that's a, a great lesson for us today to put put your faith in God and, and go where where you where you can do the greater good. And it's not so much your what you want, but where you're needed. So Father, if you want to talk about uh, the theology behind that, I will I will happily step back. One of one of the great things about Gregory of Nazianzus, Basil the Great, uh, Gregory of Nyssa, John Chrysostom, this group of um, really the eastern side of the uh, Orthodox boundary, they brought a particular flair for theological reflection and writing. Most of them were classically trained, uh, trained by pagans as rhetoricians and as philosophers. They transferred that degree of experience, talent, um, and really kind of being very splendid in the crafting of argument to their faith. So this was this was the great in it. This is the great innovation, the great development of the fourth century. And with Gregory of Nazianzus, particularly his piece uh, on the Trinity, it, or, is really one of the seminal. Um, and also one of the watershed works 
that gives us the, the flavors we need in theological reflection and apology for the Nicene Creed. So Basil the Great uh, was, a, was literally a great maneuverer and a great politician and was the one who really pushed Gregory into his episcopacy, uh, which also led to him having time in Constantinople in the court uh, of, the, uh, of the Byzantine Empire. These were not things that he aspired to. He really did want to be a monk. And you see that tension actually resolved in De Trinitate. Um, really one of the great pieces of work that you'll read in Greek in reflecting on the nature of the Trinity. I know you're all really wanting to, to get your uh, ancient Greek worked up, but um, mm -hmm. his artistry in that writing is really incredible. And uh, I translated portions of the work when I was a student in seminary and still every once in a while I'll pull it out and read it. Um, truly, he's a master of the word and also uh, theological reflection. We still use elements of this group of Cappadocian fathers, even today. This coming Sunday, we're going to hear Eucharistic Prayer D from the Book of Common Prayer in 1979, which is drawn directly from the liturgy of Basil the Great. So just to hold that up to everyone so they can hear that. All right, we're ready. We're ready. And, and a preview, please join us on Sunday, 8 and 10. And... Uh in church and live on Facebook and later on YouTube, and you will hear exactly what we're talking about, prayer D. But today we have morning prayer. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our Psalms this morning are 41 and 52. I will lead with the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Happy are those who consider the poor. The Lord delivers them in the day of trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. They are called happy in the land. You do not give them up to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed. In their illness, you heal all their infirmities. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies wonder in malice. When will I die and my name perish? And when they come to see me, they utter empty words while their hearts gather mischief. When they go out, they tell it abroad. 
All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They think that a deadly thing has fastened on me, that I will not rise again from where I lie. Even my bosom friend in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted the heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me, because my enemy has not triumphed over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Why do you boast, O mighty one, of mischief done against the godly all day long? You are plotting destruction. Your tongue is like a sharp razor, you worker of treachery. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that devour, O oh, deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. He will snatch up, he will snatch and tear you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear and will laugh at the evildoer, saying, See the one who would not take refuge in God, but trusted in abundant riches and sought refuge in wealth. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name, for it is good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them formed it in a mold and cast an image of a calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. And they have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you, I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. The Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain, carrying the two tablets of the covenant in his hands, tablets that were written on both sides, written on the front and on the back. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved upon the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, it is not the sound made by victors or the sound made by losers. It is the sound of revelers that I hear. As soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot, 
and he threw the tablets from his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made, burned it with fire, ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle, the song of Hannah, together. My heart exalts in you, O God. My triumph song is lifted in you. My mouth derides my enemies, for I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like you, nor any rock to be compared to you, our God. Do not heap up prideful words or speak in arrogance. Only God is knowing and weighs all actions. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the weak are clothed in strength. Those once full now labor for bread. Those who hungered now are well fed. The childless woman has borne sevenfold, while the mother of many is forlorn. God destroys and brings to life, casts down and raises up, gives wealth or takes it away, humbles and dignifies. God raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with rulers and inherit a place of honor. For the pillars of the earth are God's, on which the whole earth is founded. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Colossus. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Hum husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, or they may lose heart. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, not only while being watched and in order to please them, but wholeheartedly fearing the Lord. Whatever your task, put yourselves into it as done for the Lord and not for your masters. Since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward, you serve the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong has been done, and there is no partiality. Masters, treat your slaves justly and fairly, for you know that you also have a master in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us as well, that God will open to us a door for the word, that we may declare the mystery of Christ for which I am in prison, so that I may reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourselves wisely toward outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, the faithful and beloved brother who is one of you. They will tell you about everything here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And if Jesus, who is called Justice, greets you, there are only, there are, these are the only ones of the circumcision among my co-workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you. He is always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf, so that you may stand mature and fully assured in everything that God wills. For I testify for him that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it read also in the church of the Laodiceans and see that you read also the letter from Laodicea and say to Archippus, see that you complete the task that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, a song of Christ's goodness. Together. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness, you nurse us, and with pure milk, you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. 
Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness for the beauty of heaven. May your love prepare us. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who has revealed your church, your who has revealed to your church your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God in Trinity of persons. Give us grace that, like your bishop Gregory of Nazianzus, we may continue steadfast in the confession of this faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me for a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for Kim. We pray for Anne, Elizabeth, Anne-Marie, Bill, Doug, Betty, we pray for all those who are undergoing treatment for health concerns, for those who are awaiting tests for health concerns. We pray for their loved ones and caregivers. We 
We pray for all those who are struggling in their faith and for those who are struggling with their mental stability. We pray for everyone to find peace and consolation. We pray for peace where there is conflict. We pray for healing. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Lexington, the Episcopal Church. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverend John M. Locke, the Reverend Deacons, Magdalena Otters, Bill Balmer, Dr. Carolyn Bradley, Eve Chamberlain, Naomi Cressman, Dorothea Hospador, Chizoba Nuanquo, pardon me, Karen Riemann and Trisha Thorme. Forgive my pronunciation. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land, the barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, that concludes morning prayer and gets a great start to our work day, our work week, our week of service and worship and witness to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, today. You know what? Go check out the website and know that uh, everything that's going on, you can find at uh, stpeterspotswood.org. And we are getting, you know, and we're doing all kinds of things. So check us out. Uh, and I actually do check out the website because and I'm going to do a quick five on the on the week. We have the daily offices. We have vestry tonight. We have a, uh, a, a summit in the diocese on gay and lesbian transgender ministries this evening. We have um, as well in the coming days a gathering with uh, the clericus in South River. And also I'll be cooking at Replenish Dine Below the Line on Thursday evening and representing St. Peter's Episcopal Church and Community Folk Ministries against two professional chefs. Let pray for us and for everyone's gustatory palates that they may be satisfied. And then on Saturday, we have women's breakfast and this is the bonus. So we go to six. Frank Runyon is going to be with us. 
a wonderful actor who is going to be doing St. Luke's Stories from the Road. Um, looking very much forward to that. We still have some spots available. Hope you do avail yourself of that. Please do come and enjoy. Easily done by going to our website and clicking on the Cheddar Up link that is under his face and name. And also he'll be with us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. to preach and to speak about his life in Hollywood uh, before his experience of recommitting himself to Christ in his ministry of performance. So look forward to sharing this remarkable talent with you all. Please do join us. Don't forget to like and, and check subscribe. Out the website. <laughs> and, and check out the website. Don't forget to like and subscribe this because otherwise you won't get any of those updates. There you have it. And that is uh, again, this is how this is how life is in Spotswood. So have a great day. Check us out. We will see you again at five for evening prayer and tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for morning prayer all over again. Have a blessed day. We'll see you soon. Take care and God bless.